Cybertruck and Semi are coming, and I've got an inside scoop or two. I'm Brian. Welcome to my test the weekend. As a reminder, this is the Friday live edition, or it's the weekend condensed version on the main channel. Who knows? It's whichever one you see on the screen. You know how it goes. If you want to see the live version, it's a lot of fun, and you can join in the chat. You can drop into my Q&A hole. So let's get into the rumors, shall we? Let's start easy. Tesla planning to add a third shift at Giga Berlin in December. Yeah, nothing new. We've been hearing about this for months, but now apparently it's actually happening. Super exciting, I know. Uh, the rumor uh, in Canada, and I tease my friendly neighbors in the great white north. I know you say it normal is more than a rumor now. Uh, apparently, executives from Tesla have met with Francois-Philippe Champagne. Did I say it right? And uh, they're looking to see if uh, they can strike a deal. Canada, as a reminder, was on my list of 24 potential candidate countries where a gigafactory could be built. It was number two. Sometimes I'm right. I don't know. This time, we shall see. But I'm stalling, aren't I? Because I got good stuff. Breaking. Everything's breaking with Sawyer. Tesla has closed reservations for the Tesla Semi, but have completely revamped the Semi website with new pics, vids, info, and interior shots. It'll now have three motors, down from four, and can recover 70% of its range in 30 minutes using mega chargers. If you're not following Sawyer on Twitter, you probably should. Oh, he's not following me. Hmm. 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 So, check it out. Tesla shuts down orders with the Semi Updates website. Now, we the biggest update to notice is the price has been removed. And that's because the 150 to 180 that it was supposed to be shipping at uh, is not practical anymore. And considering some of the upgrades, it may not be necessary. Uh, one of the things that Tesla said on the promotional material is that you could save 200,000 in fuel over the first three years, which, uh, especially with the high cost of fuel now, is quite possibly very easy to do. So let's uh, talk a little bit more about that, huh? So, oh uh, yeah, kind of fun here. Tesla says, the weight is on point and that it's crucial. Now this is a big deal, the weight. Can we get it down to the point where it can handle where it can be 80,000. Now that's the, the tractor, the trailer, the cargo, the gas, if you have it, the driver, his accessories, his luggage, his shoes, it's all the weight. If you roll into a stop at a way station and you're over 80,000 pounds, you're gonna have a bad time. Interestingly, this says that they can be two tons over. So you actually, can do 82,000 pounds on an electric semi. So let's talk about the weight real quick. Because one of the first buyers is the Frito-Lay company. You can fill a semi-trailer full of chips and it's not gonna weigh very much, but that's only one application. So this is fun, I saw this on Reddit today. Napkin math, two kilowatt hours a mile, 500 miles of range means a battery approaching one megawatt. 70% recharge in 30 minutes means an average rate of 1.4 megawatts, 5.6 time, times the peak of a, of a version three supercharger. Now, assuming a similar supercharging profile to my 2018 Model 3 in the best possible conditions limits itself to 87 kilowatts at 70%, scaled up 13 times, so you could do it. It'd be 1.5 megawatts is what you need. Now, when these came out, they were not 1.5 megawatts. They were one megawatt. Apparently, they have been upgraded. And that jives with this delivery to Frito-Lay. So that's good news, one megawatt. That sounds like kind of the sweet spot for the battery. Now, that's gonna be heavy, though. That's gonna be real heavy. So let's talk about the weight. One megawatt, this is from the same uh, Reddit thread. This is on 
either Tesla Motors or Tesla Investors Club. One megawatt hour of batteries at a density of 0.25 to 0.3 kilowatt hours per kilogram means a battery weight in the order of three and a half to four tons just for the cell, not even counting the pack. That's a lot. That uh, efficiency per uh, watt hour per kilogram appears correct, uh, according to Jordan Gisagi, who worked with a university in California somewhere, I forget where, offhand, to take apart the batteries. Energy density in the 272 to 296 range. So that's, that's right there. That's right where it needs to be to come in at an awful lot of weight. So what is it going to weigh? Is it going to be light enough to actually work? So here's what a Tesla Model 3 uh, motor weighs, according to Sandy Monroe, about 46 kilograms. That's about 100 pounds, 101. And then you've got, we can compare, so we know the pack weight is going to be quite a few tons, and then the batteries, quite a few tons. So let's compare that to semis. How heavy is a semi tractor? Just the engine can weigh 3,000 pounds. Now there are smaller ones, but I think we have to compare most powerful to most powerful. This will be a powerful semi. 3,000 pounds is what we're going with. And then you've got the transmission, 794 pounds. Huh. It's got to handle a lot of torque. It's got a lot of work to do. Do you know how much the gas weighs? The diesel fuel? You can have two tanks on your semi, each one 120 to 150 gallons, seven pounds a gallon. We're talking 900 to 2100 pounds of fuel. So how's that compare? Diesel semi weight, 3000 pound motor, 800 pound transmission, gas is 2100. That's 5894 for those three elements versus the semi 7500. I split the difference on the weight, the pack uh, for the assembly around it. I said 500 pounds considering the efficiencies gained from the structural improvements of the 4680. I think that's reasonable. We could bump it up motors, three of them. We now know it's three at 101 pounds. That's 8,300 pounds for a difference of 2,400 pounds. It's only 2,400 pounds heavier and it gets an extra 2,000 pounds of weight allowance. My friend, we are in the ballpark on weight. Now, Tesla says the range is 500 miles fully loaded. If that's true, this is a pretty effective tool. And you can see why at those prices, at those uh, efficiencies, why it may not make any sense to sell it for under 250 or 300 or, or more. So just for some fun, <laughs> this guy went ahead and did some math. Let's say you wanted to try and park a semi charging at home. My panel has a 200 amp breaker. Uh, that's, so how long, how long would it take? Uh, you know, 1.4 megawatts, that's 1400 kilowatts or 30 of my houses daisy chained to feed a mega charger all running at once. While the units of power are uncommon, the math is easy. <laughs> I got this math. If I got this math wrong, please correct me. Running a 1.4 megawatt charger for one hour will produce 1400 kilowatt hours of energy. The average U.S. home consumes 893. So that's typical. That one hour is comparable to one home for a month and a half. Youch. <laughs> So you can run a kettle and a microwave off the mega charger. It's like cooking 1400 microwave meals at the same time, assuming a thousand watt microwave. That's a lot of juice, my friend. That's going to create a necessity for some interesting solutions. So what time is it? Yeah, it's time to talk about Malik's, my friend. Malik's. So uh, let's see, which one should we do first? I'm going to go first with with my source in Nevada, who I've been talking with off and on for many months. 
and in July we started talking uh, more directly and um, um, I'm not going to use his name of course we'll call him uh, Dick Sniffles that's a good name anyway he says he uh, he builds motors parts for motors motors and uh, he gave me some information he said well these are um, the semi is not going to be using Model 3 motors. It's going to be using carbon overwrap motors, similar to the Plaid, maybe identical, maybe not, but it's going to be using those. And that's one reason they're able to use three instead of four. But uh, I've got some information about that too from a different source. So he said, um, I said, how many are you building? Are you building enough motors to make a fleet of 20 to 50 trucks? And he said, uh, three to four trucks worth a day. And this is not the line that makes the Plaid Motors. That's in Fremont. This is a line in Nevada that's making motors, which he believes will be for the semi or possibly the Cybertruck. And you remember, Sandy told me in February that, yeah, the Cybertruck is probably going to go straight to Plaid, which will get into my second leak momentarily. He said he noticed that uh, his line is not running at full capacity, so Fremont must be running at their full capacity. And he also told me that uh, there's going to be two new Powerwall 3 lines going in, in addition to the one they have. Each one should be able to do 1,100 Powerwalls a day. Three lines running would give you 3,300 Powerwalls a day by Q4. So that's the extent of those. But I said, uh, I need you to give me something to prove that you're real. And he said, how about that? What's that? That's a crate of carbon overwrapped motor components. Those are the rotating parts inside. You might recognize them from Sandy's teardown or from the Tesla event itself. Look at them. Now, mind you, I... These red marks are where I uh, obscured identifying numbers off them, and I went ahead and blurred out all of the shipping labels and whatnot. Look at that. Is that them? So, I expect this photo to be heavily borrowed in the coming days. So we do have one more bit of leak. Got a call from a channel fan today, someone I've met in person and talked with a number of times, and he's on a road trip, and he went to a brand new supercharger station that was just getting electrified today, and he spoke with the technician. The technician is from the Nevada location. He goes out, and he turns on different places, and he said, uh, you know, I'm getting a Cybertruck, and he said, oh, good. I've driven it. It's the best car I've ever driven. It's really... He says, yeah, I hope you're getting a dual motor. Why is that? Because that's probably all they're going to make over the first 500,000 units. Because apparently there is a shortage of the carbon wrap that goes on the motors. Um, but I believe it might go beyond that. I believe the number of motors they're going to be needing for the Cybertruck and the Semi and the models 3 and Y and Plaid, S and X, I think there's a shortage of motors. So the rumor from some technician, from Tesla, from Nevada, who's not in Nevada today, is that the first 500,000 will be dual motor. That's why I spelled dual wrong. Get it? It's on purpose. So... I think, even though it's quite early, we will go into the Q&A hole. Join me, won't you? I did want to mention that there is a outside possibility that I will be going to the Tesla Owners Club Florida TeslaCon event in October. It's limited to 350 people. I got in touch with them to offer my, my services, and they said, um, uh, maybe. It is the... Roster's already full, but they may be expanding into a second meeting room. Um, so there may be an opportunity for me. 
But more importantly, this 350 doesn't include me. Um, so I would be on top of that number so I could just go. So if that's something you got, I mean, it's exciting. Such a small group. I think I may be interested. In, I, I'm definitely interested. I do probably have, I have enough miles that I can get the ticket. And with just 350 people, even if I'm not on stage, that is a heck of a networking opportunity. So we shall see. We shall see. Uh, thanks, as always, to my Patreons who get early access, bonus content, all that good stuff. Keep the channel running. And uh, thank you, LG, for the super chat. Finally made it onto a live stream. Only 10 minutes behind. Catching up at one and a half. Exceptional content recently, Brian. Thank you. Thank you so much. I uh, feel like I've been on a bit of a roll. I've uh, had some good stuff come out. And I've got more good stuff coming up. And I've got two videos already in the works, plus the cathode building one coming up and the side-by-side um, -side progress one coming up. And then, of course, next month I will be hosting a panel at Fully Charged, and I will be a guest on a second panel at Fully Charged. And then at the end of next month, I will be hosting a panel at EVolution 22 in Burnaby, in Vancouver. So, <laughs> am I going to make it, you guys? Am I going to make it? Is this going to happen? <gasps> Maybe. Maybe. Well, there it is, and there you go. If you want to see the full, uncut, 30-ish minute version of this episode, head over to the second channel, link in the description, and subscribe over there if you want to catch these live each Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific, as well as the Fast Charging with B&B &B podcast, co-hosted with Bear from Bear's Workshop. So, what did I miss or misunderstand? Tell me in the comments, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the other side.